Kia ora no, I'm Rachel. Welcome back to my channel where I'm talking about well-being and activism. Uh, today I'm looking forward to talking to you about the radical political origins of the concept of self-care and um, that uh, that's all owed to the fabulous Audre Lorde. Um, I'm also wanting to connect this to Kellyanne Maddox here on YouTube. She does self-love self -love September every September um, and I'm hoping to put out, you know, I wanted to put out a video like this um, in connection to that. Uh, I think this is going to come out probably the last week of September, so I'm a bit late to September, but um, anyway, I'm stuck in and uh, I just, yeah, I really want to do something for self-love September because uh, Kellyanne has been doing that for, I think, I think this is the seventh year, so there's so many fabulous resources there and they've been a great resource to me and I wanted to um, make sure that you guys knew about that fabulous um, collection of wisdom and advice um, and reflection that Kellyanne has produced. Um, yeah, and I thought that this topic of the radical political origins of self-care would fit nicely in with that. Um, and I'm also going to link below... Um, just this this very September, Kellyanne has done a video about self-love when you are broke, when you've got no money to spend on uh, self-love and self-care. So um, I think that's really relevant to what I'll be talking about today. Yeah, so let's get into it. I'm um, just going to have a sip of tea. So, and I feel a bit funny, I don't have a physical copy of the book Burst of Light by like Audre Lorde to wave at the camera, which feels a bit strange, but um, because I borrowed it by, by ebook um, and read it on my phone. Uh, but I can say out of that experience that if you have a Wellington Libraries library card, you can download the app Libby and it's available, you can read it on your phone. Um, but I also, I'll put a link below to, you know, the details of the book. Um, so Audre Lorde wrote in um, sort of between, I think, I think it started in 1985 to 1987, um, a record of journals about what it was like to be living with and confronting her liver cancer. And she wrote these journals um, as a way of reflecting on that experience and in the hope of um, being of some use to other women, particularly black women, who who were experiencing the same thing, who are also living with cancer. Um, and in it, she comes to some fabulous points and conclusions about um, the need to take ownership of her own care. And it's interesting reading this book because when I went into it, um, because I'd, I'd heard that this was sort of the origins of the modern concept of self-care, um, I kept wanting it to be a self-help kind of self-care book, you know, or something about like, here's the things within activism that make it hard to have self-care and here's um, some things we can do instead to look after ourselves kind of thing and it's not that um, and it was a good reminder actually as I got part way through and was feeling my frustration about it that this book was not written for me um, but regardless of that I think it's really really worth reading no matter you know who you are and what your what your lived experience is with health but what's really interesting about it is that um, self-care is is quite broad in this book in terms of the fact that it's not just about um, her learning to take breaks when she needs to and um, you know enjoy the things that she loves and stuff like that although that's in there as well um, it's a big big part of it is about her realizing that she had to take ownership of her body and ownership of her own kind of um, of her own medical experience and story and stuff in the face of doctors who were racist and sexist and um, and 
condescending to her and were trying to bully and coerce her into taking actions, particularly having surgery that she didn't want to have. Um, and her kind of living with uh, the doubt of, you know, of what of the decisions that she was making, thinking through those decisions, seeking alternative um, alternative forms of health and stuff like that, and uh, and how that all played out for her. Um, so I think, yeah, self care is can kind of be widened than maybe the way we think of it now. But it, it definitely made me think of self care in a different way in terms of the, uh, being really about. Um, about ownership of our bodies in the face of a medical system that uh, doesn't always honor all of who we are or um, empower us to be the owners of our own bodies. Um, oh, I should maybe say too, if you aren't familiar with Audre Lorde's work, uh, aside from this book, like, please go out and read some. She's, I mean, she's, she's, uh, she, she was, she's passed away now. Um, but she was a black lesbian poet who spent her whole life, you know, fighting um, racism, sexism, homophobia, and her writing is just so uh, juicy and alive and um, full of just glorious um poetic expression of uh the richness of life and both the difficulties and the 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 gorgeousness kind of thing um so yeah do yourself a favor if you haven't read any audrey lord she's not only just an awesome she wasn't only an awesome activist but also just um just a, a wonderful writer as well um yeah so I wanted to, I've, yeah, I don't know how, how reading aloud will go on this, but I wanted to read a couple of quotes from this. This is particularly the epilogue at the end. She really kind of summarizes maybe what more might be useful to a lot of us, which is sort of her reflections on um, what she'd learned for her activism out of this experience of confronting her, her cancer and learning how to live with uh, her limited energies and stuff like that. And that clash between um, her desires to be, uh, you know, use herself as a tool for change and, um, yeah, the realities of what she was able to do towards the end of her life. So, um, yeah, I'll read you a little bit of this. Sometimes I feel like I'm living on a different star from the one I am used to calling home. It has not been a steady progression. I had to examine in my dreams as well as in my immune function tests the devastating effects of overextension. Overextending myself is not stretching myself. I had to accept how difficult it is to monitor the difference. Necessary for me is cutting down on sugar. Crucial. Physically, psychically. Caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. Um, that last sentence is probably... The most famous and I should say too that I, I actually read an article that clued me onto the fact that this was um, you know kind of the beginning of the the self-care movement um, and I'll link that below as well I can't remember who wrote it sorry but um, that article talks about how following on from Audre Lorde um, activists particularly feminist, a queer activist, and a black activist had taken on this this notion of self-care as being a political tool and um, this notion of survival and um, survival as who you are uh, rather than a kind of a reduced version of yourself um, as a political, you know, an act of political warfare that that Audre Lorde had presented um, and the way you know she talks a few times in the book about how you know conquerors to win they have to conquer but the people who are being attacked only have to survive and um, that idea of um, the 
the mechanics of racism and stuff like that trying to defeat black lives and um and responding to that by caring for yourself um comes through all the way through the book kind of thing um it's interesting that the article talks about it and i can relate to this um so the article that that mentioned how how this was the origins of self-care talks about how uh in many ways self-care has come to be just more another version of me time kind of thing and this is what i was going to come back to kellyanne's uh thing on youtube here actually for self-love september about self-love when you're broke uh she talks really clearly there is somebody who consumes a lot of self-love material that so often what you find are articles that are full of uh, product placement you know the way that self-care has been used to sell us a need to consume um things that will just sort of fill a hole um you know or to be going to spa treatments or something like that i think a lot of people when they think of self-care self-love is sort of um yeah not attainable for most people who don't have money and um and from my perspective too not that i have sort of surveyed everything that's out there but a lot of what i have found and consumed and stuff to do with self-care and self-love and and kind of the wellness um industry i guess is uh at least fairly apolitical you know and it and it tends to have a um a bit of a feel of just kind of patching people up and sending them back to work you know um that's the way i often feel when i'm doing some of the you know consuming some of the you know youtube things for example of yoga or meditation or whatever that um are really useful but still kind of have a bit of a feel to me that they're there to just um yeah keep us keep us surviving keeping us in but in the machine kind of thing and so I guess it's just um, it's just so nice to me. It's so um, it's so kind of fueling and inspiring to me to read something like A Burst of Light by Audre Lord and be reminded that self care and activism are not two separate poles. You know that they they are so so intimately connected and crucially vitally um connected and yeah because like on the other side as well like i've i've been you know watching more bread tube videos and stuff like that since i made this channel and trying to sort of position myself um in, in in the broader landscape and stuff of leftist youtube um producers and i definitely haven't checked out all the channels there's a lot of them but but from what I've seen so far, I don't see a lot of wellness stuff, and I see like there's probably more um, overlap between like gaming channels and and bread tube than there is, um, yeah, this kind of well being, um, yeah. So on both sides, I feel like we could we could do with connecting these up a little bit more. Um, just trying to think what other insights I can can pull out of. Audrey Lord's book um, you know she writes with a real intensity and clarity of someone who's facing their own mortality and that's been another reminder to me reading that just the way that death and dying and the way that we are all in some way um, on that continuum um, and and you know those around us and stuff like that uh, as well um, yeah the way that that, that that is something to be remembered i guess and thought about when we think about how we live in the world um some of the other things that i that i like about her book and that maybe are a little bit different from the way we think of um modern self-care or self-love kind of stuff is that it's it, the book is very connected like she um she writes so beautifully throughout it about the the people the women that she knows and works with and how sustaining the connection with them is and um and how inspiring and how much that gives her 
um, as well as also, you know, talking about needing to have her own rest in, in space and stuff like that. Um, and, and she talks throughout it as well about the ways that, um, oh, the other thing, what I was going to say too about the way that she talks about the people is that she doesn't describe, she doesn't spend a lot of time talking about the good works that they're doing, you know, what they're achieving. She talks about who they are as people and the richness and you get these little glimpses of, of all these people as people, you know, and who they are kind of thing, which is, which is really, I like that. And, um, and like I say about the, the deep connectedness of, you know, her, her cancer journey and, um, her wellbeing kind of journey and, um, and the political struggle she's involved in, you know, like there's some really awesome bits where she talks about how she does these uh, visualizations every day, um, where she, vis you know, she she kind of checks in with her body and visualizes um, sort of love and stuff overcoming the cancer of cells, but but she uses specific um, imagery when she's doing that of like, you know, the 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 cancerous cells being the police being just overswept by this mass of young black protesters who just are charging towards their brighter future kind of thing and just um just the uh the the beauty of her vision and the clarity and the intensity with which she holds on to that i find really really inspiring the other thing that i love about um i mean i sort of was talking about this a bit with her writing as well but her um her description of her wellness journey as well is so full of aliveness um she wants you know like a, a a full expression of human you know range of human emotions like at one stage it's it's quite a fun read you know where she she goes to Switzerland I want to say yeah Switzerland I think I often get Sweden and Switzerland mixed up sorry but I think it's Switzerland um I might be wrong sorry um to anyone in that part of the world uh to a an alternative medical center for people who have cancer and it's based on Steiner and, you know, she talks about lots of things that are beneficial and lovely and calming about this place, but she also talks, you know, quite humorously and also quite uh, frustratedly about the way that there is an enforced calm over everything, you know, that uh, they don't believe in expression of strong emotions and that we should try to work on um, de-stressing ourselves by keeping everything very neutral. And... Um, and, you know, she really makes a strong point for the the real realness of rage that comes with experiencing cancer and the real need for people to be able to express that and the, just the incredible oppressiveness of this emphasis on calm. And I think that that, that has a lesson for us in... Um, and some of the kind of self-care well-being stuff that can come through a lot of it is very can lean towards the let's just calm ourselves and um again the like a kind of feeling of how do we just stay calm and carry on in this shitty system kind of thing um you know she's she's very alive to her full range of emotions and stays that way you know throughout it and um like i say despite her waning energies kind of thing um yeah and i love that um i want to say too like the the article that i'm going to link that i like i said that that made me aware of this as the origin of modern self-care it's almost quite scathing about the the way that um that modern self-care is apolitical and is just for survival and getting through the day and um you know i understand where that's coming from i but in in this video i don't want to come across that way i think that in in many ways um thinking about that and reading audrey lord's book and stuff and thinking about survival and what we do to survive in this world um it actually 
it gives me an, an increased sense of solidarity with everybody who's living in this time under capitalism. Um, I'll, uh, Angie Speaks has done a couple of good videos, one about mental health under late capitalism and one about loneliness. And I think that those are really useful to remember just the realness of the struggle that so many people are in just to um, get through the day and the way um, I don't know that that's in those ones so much, but certainly in other places I've kind of read about and thought, you know, been called to think about the way that um, this generation of um, adults have a really being exploited and pushed to work longer, longer hours and, you know, for less security and... Um, are often not even aware of how that is for them kind of thing. And so I think so many of us uh, have needed to just look to our basic needs of our bodies and the fact that they do have needs and we have needs as social, spiritual, you know, feeling beings as well as just work machines kind of thing. Um, that That's a particular challenge for our generation and and um, and the isolation as well that comes from from long work hours and um, social media and all the usual blah blah blah. But anyway, Angie Speaks talks about that better than me. But I just wanted to point to that as well. And like I say, just the the sense of compassion I feel for all of us who survive and need tools to survive in this day and age. Um, but yeah, that all is a bit bleak, but. <laughs> I guess what I'm wanting to say with this is that it's, you know, I set up this challenge to want to connect the whole kind of like political well-being kind of things into into a place where the two can come together. Um, and it's just so exciting to me to to think about these, you know, these radical origins and also to, to keep thinking and finding places where they're still being connected or being reconnected. Um, uh, I, I know I've said before, but I'll say again that on this channel I've created a playlist of uh, other, you know, videos from around YouTube where people are talking about well-being and, and activism or organizing and social justice, all those sort of things. And um, the other day, just serendipitously, I, because I haven't listened to all of those. Oh, and I just want to say too, if you know any that I don't know of, please put them in the comments below because I want to just keep adding all the time. And of course, I haven't found anything. But um I serendipitously watched this video um, by, it was an interview with Adrienne Marie Brown, whose work I didn't know anything about before that, and she she has written this book and talk, that talks about pleasure activism, which is so wonderful, and you know, she talks a little bit about Audre Lorde and that, and I feel like there's a real connection of this, you know, this coming through of the aliveness and stuff like that, that I talked about Audre Lorde expressing, and that, that's so deep connection between uh, self-love, self-care, and and activism, or organizing, whichever you want to call it, um, and, and, and through that article, through that, sorry, through that interview as well, that um, called my attention to another thing that I never heard of, which was generative somatics, which um, I then went and watched a fabulous uh, YouTube clip about um, how somatics uh, is useful for people who are in social justice struggle and the article you know the 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 panel was talking about during COVID and stuff so it's just so relevant and um, super super interesting and I, I'll probably do another video later about it I'll link this below but I just wanted to point you to it because I feel really excited about it as an extension like I say it feels like it's drawing on very much the same kind of energies as Audre Lorde and especially this aliveness. I love, love, and I haven't seen it anywhere else in quite the same way. I love the way that they talk in the somatic stuff about um, how the body is, you know, connecting with the body. Um, they, um, they have some great uh, sayings like, you know, we center. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different sort of you know visualization connecting sort of practices that they that they talk about and it's about having an actual practice as well as a discussion around it but they have sayings like you know we center not to feel more calm but to feel 
more to 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 connect with more of what our body and our emotions is telling us so that we can make decisions from there um or things like you know a relaxed body is a powerful body so yeah just really good stuff and um can't really contain my excitement about that so go check it out um yeah i think that's pretty much all i wanted to say about this stuff i you know without just reading heaps of quotes from Audrey Lord's book I don't know if I can really express what you can get out of it but um I just wanted to to make those connections you know and um and I will end with another delicious quote from here this is actually the very end of the book the end of the epilogue living with cancer has forced me to consciously jettison the myth of omnipotence of believing or loosely asserting that I can do anything as uh, along with any dangerous illusion of immortality. Neither of these unscrutinized defenses are a solid base for either political activism or personal struggle. But in their place, another kind of power is growing. Tempered and enduring, grounded within the realities of what I can and do accomplish. Using who I am and who I most wish myself to be. To stretch as far as I can go and relish what is satisfying rather than what is sad. Building a strong and elegant pathway toward transition. I work, I love, I rest, I see and learn. And I report. These are my givens. Not sureties, but a firm belief that whether or not living them with joy prolongs my life. It certainly enables me to pursue the objectives of that life with a deeper and more effective clarity. Wishing you a wonderful little bit of what we have left of Self Love September and um, and uh, Sorry that I don't, I feel like I'm not articulating a lot of this very well. I'm feeling into it more than I'm actually uh, able to say. But um, yeah, just go well. Take care of yourself and each other. Noho oramai.